Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. It's been a busy one. We're coming up on a past summit. And if you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dive in. I mentioned past summit coming up. It is next week. And I'm gonna do a little shameless plug for the BI Power Hour. That's right, the BI Power Hour is back at Past Summit. It will be on Friday, November 9th at 11 a.m. in room 3AB. A lot of folks have said that this is probably the most fun session that they've ever been to. This is not meant to actually necessarily teach you anything, but it's more to have a good time, see what the Microsoft BI products can do, and maybe get a little swag in the process. And always during this session, we apologize for any accidental learning that may occur. So if you're excited about the BI Power Hour, go ahead and leave hashtag BI Power Hour down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you. Gilbert Hughes got a blog post talking about quick tips for using the aggregations and composite models features inside a Power BI desktop. I read through these, there are some really good tips inside of it. Some of it were taken out of some videos that we had. I know they were really long videos, so it's really great to see just a summary of some of those tips that were out there along with some of his own. So if you're gonna use aggregations and composite models, be sure to check out this blog post so that you can at least be aware of some things that are going on. Matt Allington has a blog post talking about how to create an actual slicer panel inside a Power BI desktop. This takes advantage of the bookmarks and selection capabilities so that you can have the panel of slicers visible when they need to change it and then hide it when they don't need it so that you can have more room for your visuals on the canvas. This is a great technique. I highly recommend you take a look at this and take advantage of the feature set. And Matt's got you covered with a blog post to walk you through how to do this. Links is always down in the description below, along with links for everything in this roundup and some bonus items. Go check it out. Dhruvan Shah, and I apologize if I got your name wrong, has a blog post talking about how to create an event calendar inside of Power BI. This was kind of neat. I really like the idea, especially when you wanna track events for your organization or maybe a group that you're working with and you wanna do that inside of Power BI. This approach takes advantage of the calendar custom visual done by Mac Software, and so you will need to use that custom visual to follow this blog post and the walkthrough that it has. So if calendars are something that you're interested in and you wanna create an event calendar or a calendar for anything really, go ahead and check out this blog post so that you can see how to do it. We have an update for the on-premises data gateway and in this update, there were a couple of things to be aware of. The first are updates to custom connectors. There was support for Vertica and web by example connectors as well as support for OAuth inside of the custom connectors as well. There were also public preview updates for SAP HANA and SAP BW. On the HANA side, there is support for single sign-on using XAML-based authentication. And on the BW side, there is single sign-on support for Kerberos. Oh, Kerberos. I love Kerberos. There were also some improved diagnostics and of course an updated mashup engine. So be sure that you've updated to the latest on-premises data gateway. This is a little late, but I wanted to make sure to include it so that you are aware, in case you weren't. The October update for Power BI Desktop is available for you. In this release, there were DAX editor improvements. This blog post also announced that composite models and aggregations are now available in the Power BI service. Be aware that this is a preview feature, but you can now play with these in the Power BI service if you're using Power BI Premium. There were a bunch of connectors that were made generally available, which includes the web by example. So that's a really cool connector if you haven't used it before, check it out. Two other big things that were in this release were the data profiling capabilities, as well as fuzzy matching when you're doing something like a merge. And if you want more details on the fuzzy matching, I've got a video linked up above where you can go check that out as well. Patrick's got you covered. There were a bunch of other updates inside of the October release of Power BI Desktop, so be sure to update to the latest version so that you can take advantage of these. And also be sure to check out the preview area to turn on any preview items that you might wanna play with and get to know. Links as always down in the description below. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this week? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. Also, if you're gonna be at the Pass Summit, leave hashtag Pass Summit down in the comments below as well, so I know you're gonna be there. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching.
keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.